I'm Elizabeth at A Literary Princess, and today I have a book haul for you. So last year, I, I hauled a lot of books, and I'm trying not to do that this year. Last year, it was mostly for my exams, but also just a little bit of the fact that I have no self-control. So I'm trying to be better and not buy and acquire so many books, especially because my husband is like, no more books there's nowhere to put them, <laughs> which I say is false, but we will agree to disagree on that. <laughs> so I am only going to be doing a few book hauls this year. I'm just going to be slowly acquiring books and we'll then do a book haul video every few months. And so this is the books that I've gotten from January to March. And I actually only bought two of these. The others were all free in one way, shape, or form. So let's jump into it. These first five books are rather special to me and almost a little bit difficult to talk about. Um, as some of you may know, my brother passed away last August. Um, like me, he was a very big reader. He was especially into history and historical fiction. And when it came time, when we were all feeling a little more up to it, and I guess it was late January, my parents and I went through his books to see if there was anything we wanted to keep and what could be donated. And I knew that there were some books that I wanted to keep, um, some books that he and I both loved, um, a book that I gave him. So these are the first five. Now, <laughs> There are 30 others still at my parents' house that will eventually come into my possession, but we're, we're slowly moving them over to here so as not to scare my husband too much. It's fine, it's fine. So the first one is actually a really weird one. I don't know why my brother had this one because it doesn't seem his usual taste, but I actually read part of it while I was hanging out in his apartment one day. But this is Women Who Run With Wolves, Myths and Stories of the Wild Woman Archetype by Clarissa Pincola Estes. Um, so this is kind of an important work in regards to like feminist looks at folklore and fairy tales, which is why it's always interested in me. So the fact that he had it was great. I don't know why he had it, but he did. <laughs> And it's a nice hardcover copy. It's in pretty good shape. So I'm excited to read this. I've read part of it um, and I did like it a lot. I just didn't get to finish it because I think I was literally reading it while I was over there waiting for a dishwasher repairman or something. So I have this. This next one I actually gave to my brother as a Christmas present the year that I turned 18. Uh, I was so excited. Like I was 18, I was going off to college. And I was like, I'm gonna get everyone a Christmas present because I'm an adult now. And I just happened upon this in the um, history section of the bookstore. And I was like, this is a time period he likes. And it happened to be by his favorite historian. So this is Richard and John, Kings at War by Frank McClinn. Um, as you can see, this thing is beat to hell. This ended up being one of my brother's favorite books and he read it a lot. So of course I wanted to keep this. I don't really know much about this time period and the history surrounding it, to be honest. So I'm excited to learn about it and also just to share this little piece of my brother. Yeah. And then we have the first three books in a series that me and my brother both really loved. Um, the Saxon Stories by Bernard Cornwell. So this is the first book, The Last Kingdom, which I have read. My brother lent this to me um, while I was in college. And the second book, The Pale Horseman, which I think I also read, or at least partly read. Oh, it's called The Saxon Tales, excuse me. I, I, as far as I know, there's like four different uh, series titles for this. Like it gets called The Last Kingdom because of the TV show. It gets called The Saxon Tales. It gets called The Saxon Stories. They're really good though. Um, they follow a character named Uhtred, son of Uhtred. He's English, but he his 
family gets killed and he ends up being raised by Danes. And so, and then it's at the time of Alfred the Great and his attempt to unite England. So it's really interesting. And then this is the third book, Lords of the North, which I have not read yet. Um, and I have, back at my parents' house, there's at least six more of these, possibly more, I can't quite remember. He had a lot of the series, so these will just be slowly migrating. So you'll, you'll see more of these this year. Now we have a book that I actually bought. Um, and I absolutely went out and bought this after my first attempt at my exams that I wasn't able to finish and I was feeling sad. So I bought myself a book because that's what I do. This is The Stolen Air by Holly Black. I, I've loved, I've loved Holly Black since high school. I was very into her modern fairy tale series, which is made up of Tithe, Valiant, and Ironside. Reread those as an adult and was like, oh, very early 2000s edgy and a little disturbing. Um, but this is a follow-up series to the Folk of the Air trilogy, which I really enjoyed. Uh, so this takes place a few years after and is focused on Jude's brother, Oak, and then this girl Surin, who is the child queen of the Court of Teeth. I honestly, I just saw this and was like, I need it because I like this series. And also it's the Barnes and Noble collector's edition, which I love. And I have, um, I have the Cruel Prince and the Queen of Nothing in the collector's edition. So I wanted this. And then I have the regular edition of the Wicked King and how the King of Elfheim learned to hate stories. So it's like when they're on my shelf, it goes black, white, black, white, black. It just looks good, okay? It just looks good. I haven't gotten to read this yet. I really want to. I'm really in the mood too. Maybe this is what I need to get out of my reading slump. We'll see. And this next one is another freebie that I got at my university. I think I've mentioned before that, um, in our administrative assistance office, there's just like a pile of books that are like free. And so every time I have to go in to talk to her naturally, I look through the books and see if there's anything. And I decided to go home with Shelley's Poetry and Prose. It is a Norton critical edition, which is really why I picked it up. I'm not a huge Percy Shelley fan, but he is in my time period. And I really can't pass up a Norton critical edition because they're great. And also I don't have a lot of his longer poems or his, any of his prose. I have like a collection of his shorter poems. So yeah, I figured I'd grab this. And then this last one is my gift to myself for passing my exams. This is The Mystery of Mrs. Blencaro by Margaret Oliphant. It is a Persephone books edition which I have never owned a Persephone books edition of anything, but I've always really admired them. And so when I passed my exams, I was like, yeah, we're, we're just gonna, we're gonna look, we're gonna look, we're gonna see what they have. And then they had something by Margaret Oliphant. And I was like, it's the heavens telling me that this was for me. Um, so, I mean, this is just gorgeous. And look at these, oh, it comes with a bookmark. And look at the end papers. I like don't want to open it too wide. So this um, contains both Mrs. the mystery of Mrs. Blencaro and also Queen Eleanor and Fair Rosamond. So I'm just really excited about this. And I can be like, it's for school because I think based on what I read the brief summary of the Mystery of Mrs. Blencaro, I think I can use this for my dissertation. So it, it was for school as well as a gift to me. So those are all of the books that I got from January to March. Let me know down in the comments below. Have you read any of these? What did you think? What is the most recent books you bought? It has been great chatting with you. I will see you soon. Bye.